Oh, you know what time it is. You know what time it is, Brianna. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. You know what time it is, Holes. It's time for the main event. No, it's time for uh, Spicy Reddit Stories. The main event of the evening. Which is Spicy Reddit Stories. Yeah, Reddit Roulette, baby. Wow. It'd be wild to like sit in like the middle of an arena, like one of the middle like kind of venues where it's like you look around and everybody is around you no matter where you look. Kind of like a round. You know, like a round <laughs> amphitheater, sort of. Oh my god, Just take a shot every time he says around. <laughs> All right, let's get into this bitch. My next story is posted on r slash relationship advice. I, 35 female, am not sure if I want to be married to my wonderful husband, 38 male, anymore. What do I do? Wonderful husband? What a title. I, my yeah, I husband's know. wonderful, but, but I don't know. I don't know if I want him. <laughs> right. Well, maybe she wants him, but she doesn't want to be married. I don't know. Maybe she just doesn't like... Let's I find out. <laughs> yeah, let's actually take a little look. All right. And stop wasting time. I hate writing this because it makes me feel so... Because it makes me... F All right, hold on. Let's, let's try that right. again. <laughs> let's try that <Yeah>. again. <laughs> okay. I hate writing this because it makes it feel so much more real. But here it goes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's run it back one more time. Take two. Take three, actually. And... Oh, take three. All right. Ready? <clears throat> yep. Set. I hate writing this because it makes it feel so much more real. But here it goes. I, yes. 35 female, have been married to my husband, 38 male, for 12 years. Together for 14. We have two wonderful children, 8 female and 5 male, and have built a great life together. I have no complaints about the man I am married to. He is loyal, honest, a hard worker. But. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does everything for us and adores both me and our children. I have never had to question his faithfulness. He's never been the slightest bit abusive. He keeps up with his end of the housework, plus more if I'm honest. He is not perfect, but he is an amazing husband, father, and friend. However, I have not been attracted to him for years and find myself wondering if I'm quote unquote in love. I adore the person he is. He is my absolute best friend, but I often find myself fantasizing about being alone. I don't think about dating or being with other men. I'd be fine being single. I have thought about divorce so many times in the past four years or so, but always push those thoughts aside for our family. They have become more frequent lately and I'm not sure how to handle it. Yes, we go on dates frequently and try to find activities that we enjoy together. I have been pushing myself to be intimate with him more in the hopes that I will overcome all these feelings, but I just find myself not turned on in the slightest. It has nothing to do with his physical appearance. He's very handsome and takes care of himself. I just am not into it. I've started therapy individually to help process these feelings as well as deal with past personal trauma. I've also set up an appointment for marriage counseling for us. Although I'm not sure if that will do any good since we don't really have any problems to talk through. Our relationship is great and we rarely argue. We agree on a lot and take care of our home and children as a solid team. This would be so much easier if he wasn't so great. I despise myself for saying I am considering divorcing such a wonderful man. It absolutely breaks my heart to think that I'd be hurting him and hurting our, our children. I'm not saying that I will divorce, but I have certainly considered it multiple times. I have no reason to leave other than uh, unhappiness on my part. I know he'd go out of his way to try to make me happy. However, I don't think there's anything that can be done on his end. I am prepared for the awful comments I'll receive here. Just curious if anyone has been in a similar situation and how you've dealt with it. I'm so torn between spending the rest of my life uh, sacrificing my own happiness for that of my husband slash best friend and children, or risking it all to find myself. Yikes! Man, you know, I mean, even though we started out joking and whatnot, to take a more serious approach to this, I think on first glance, people might look at this post and... Oh, like, how dare you? Like, how how dare you, like, fall out of love with your husband? And it's, like, she tried. She really yeah. is, like, trying her absolute best to find some sort of spark in her marriage again. Absolutely. Um, but I think, as unfortunate as it is, and yes, it would more than likely absolutely crush her husband and the children if it did lead to like a divorce or like a separation where they're no longer like you know together like living in the same space yeah and having that family dynamic but you know i i think it's not really i guess normalized ever really to be like oh to be like to have this be a legitimate reason to leave being just it, it's i just don't it's just not there 
anymore. And like, yeah, people know, fall out of love. Like she, yeah. And I don't, I don't think that that may not be talked about on a regular basis. You know, no, I feel like definitely general conversation. Yeah, I feel like definitely nowadays it's like when people break up, people are always like, "Oh, who cheated? Ooh, who fucked up?" Like, yeah. When no, like sometimes it could be a mutual thing. Sometimes it could be one person. Like, yeah. It's. I feel like unfortunately life is too short to be in something that does not make you happy because you're doing both of you guys the disservice like you're i wouldn't say settling but kind of like forcing yourself to be in something that you know that you're not happy with and then you're also mm. depriving the other person from being with someone that they'll both be happy you know and you know i i saw earlier before we started this recording session it was a picture of jaden smith with his ex i guess i don't pay i don't follow jaden smith i don't know but it was just the the twitter user the caption was uh, it was J the picture was Jaden. It was a mirror selfie of Jaden and his I yeah. guess ex. Yeah. And and the caption was he cheated on the, he cheated on this girl. Like, yeah. And I'm like at first I'm just like you don't know like what that relationship was. I maybe like being a celebrity maybe there was like stuff that that leaked or whatever. But like uh, just on the outside glance like any <laughs> casual person just seeing that it's like you don't know. Yeah. What the real reason for them like leaving was like is this giving them an excuse to cheat? No. No. But not at all. But you, I think the thing that social media really ruined for our society as a whole is the lack of context to things when people kind of just jump to conclusions and just like need to demand things right away. You know what I mean? Or just assume right off the bat that, oh, something happened. Or there's got to be some kind of, like, secret, like, tea behind this entire situation. And I think that it really sucks that they feel this way and what what could happen to the family and everything and just their relationship in general. Yeah, it's a crazy situation. But, I hope... Uh... And it sucks that they already say that they're prepared for the awful comments that they're going to receive. I haven't looked in the comments yet. I haven't either, because like, there's a little update. Let me read this little yeah, thing. Sorry, that, that went a long time. No, it's okay. This is a 24 hours later update after they wrote the original post. Wow, I really was not expecting for this to blow up like it did. I appreciate all the feedback, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I started individualized therapy last night and want to focus on that a little bit more. A little before we begin marriage counseling. I understand that I personally have a lot I need to work through. I also intend to speak to my PCP about getting my hormones checked, just to make sure that's not uh, an underlying source. I currently do not take any medications. I have no intention of leaving or making a decision about divorce anytime soon. I plan to do a lot of work on myself and really make an effort into our, our relationship before even considering leaving. Yes, we do go on dates. Yes, we have t tried uh, spicing things up in the bedroom. No, I do not have an eye on anyone else, nor do I even care about dating in the future. I do not have a lot of time for myself. I have never taken a trip on my own, not even a girl's trip. I would like to give that a try, although I feel like that will hurt my husband's feelings as well. He's very much into doing things together and doesn't always understand how much I need alone time. I will look into finding hobbies for myself, although I truly don't know where to start. LOL. I'm not giving up on my marriage. Ideally, I would love to make this work, and I'm willing to put in the effort to at least try. The last thing I want to do is throw away all this time together, and it physically pains me to think I might hurt him. I was simply venting to some internet strangers, looking for advice and seeing if there was anyone out there who has been in my shoes. This is a journey, and I'm not sure where it will end up. But I do want to put forth my best effort in improving myself and hopefully saving my marriage as well. Yeah. See, that's very yeah, admirable. Like, yeah, because most posts... I know some people might just be, oh, you're going to side with this. Ah! But I think... I doubt it. The, well, you never know. You never know. I think it's very admirable because a lot of people nowadays, or and honestly, just in general, like it's it's very rare and it's like a strike of gold. Yeah, like a strike of gold to find someone who's willing to like put in the effort and put in the work to make a relationship work. Even mm -hmm. if they are having thoughts of like, hey, I'm unhappy, like I... I don't know what I need, but something needs to change. Like, I think it's very good that she's willing to kind of look past those thoughts and be like, okay, why am I thinking these thoughts? Like, what, what is it about my husband that's like, that I think is the source of my unhappiness, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like mo I mean, most of the posts that 
we read <coughs> of someone being like, I'm unhappy, I'm going to leave my partner. I don't think that they really, at least in the context that they give us, try as like hard to, you know, work it out. They're kind of just like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So that's why I'm really pulling for this OP. And yeah, no, I definitely hope that this ends up working out. Like, I can't imagine being in that situation and not wanting to hurt, like, your significant other in that way. I do think she needs to, they both need to work on, like, having some alone time for themselves. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's, that's super that's fucking healthy in a relationship. Like, you can't be super codependent. That's not going to be... If I don't have someone that I can lean on and be around all the time whenever I want, then I don't want them. Yeah, well, like... I'm sorry, no one's going to want you. Yeah, like, that's sus. Like, I get, like, the whole, like, being obsessed with your partner and, like, being a simp for your partner. That's a good thing. You you need I to be, simp like... simp for my partner. Exactly. Like, you you should you should be obsessed with your partner. But also understand that both of you guys have your own separate lives and, like, you guys weren't always in each other's lives. So there's no reason for that to change completely when you guys get together. So definitely that should be a thing y'all talk about. If you do end up going to marriage counseling... That should be a topic. Wish you nothing but the best, OP. Like, that's that's a sticky situation. This next post was posted on Today I Fucked Up. Today I fucked up by cyber-stalking my ex. Long backstory. My ex and I broke up six years ago. We were high school sweethearts and didn't transition well into young adulthood. At least, I didn't. We were together for around set. We were together... <laughs> <laughs> we were together... We were together for around seven years into our early 20s. She did well in school, graduated, and started her career very early. I struggled in school and eventually dropped out. I was working a restaurant job and almost became a manager. Towards the end, she rekindled with an old high school boyfriend and left me. I was kind of a wreck afterwards. I ended up moving back home with my parents, quitting my job for prospects in another industry. That didn't work out, and I ended up having shittier jobs, mostly just hung out with friends, and did drugs. Oh. I finally decided to get my life back together and move back to that area and get my restaurant job back and tried to become a manager. That's when the pandemic happened. Damn. <laughs> and it took about a year and a half to get anything happening career-wise at, uh, at the restaurant. I eventually became a manager and got a girlfriend and stopped talking to my ex altogether and finally moved on. That's where the sh story should end. <laughs> shush, 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 <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> I'm not even going to redo that. That's what's going into the episode. I worked there for another couple years and wasn't really going anywhere. The company had a revolving door of leadership up top. Everyone I knew who liked me was leaving. I was being underpaid and overworked and decided to quit. I started thinking about my ex a month ago when I ended up running into her at a bar. I hadn't thought about her in years. I was there with my girlfriend and didn't really want to speak to her. It was a weird colliding of worlds, and I just felt like the loser when I felt like when I was with her. I didn't fuck that up too much. No, well. no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you, you nailed that. You nailed that. I got a new job. It's a lower title with less pay but better hours. I'm not working 70 hours a week anymore, and they're paying me to go to school. That's great. I got accepted to take online classes in computer science and hope to have a well-paying job in the next four years. My ex's birthday just passed, and it got me thinking about her again. Ho! Oh, um, this is where I fucked up. Today, at least, in parentheses. I decided to look her up on social media. We had basically silently unfriended each other from all our socials. I never really used Instagram, but I know she did. I couldn't find her Instagram she used to use. She probably made a new one. Her sister had made a post, so I clicked on her sister's profile to see if I could find my ex's new account. On one of her sister's posts, I saw the old boyfriend my ex left me for comment on it. I clicked his profile. His most recent post was announcing his engagement to my ex. E I feel like I got punched in the gut. The pain of the breakup that I haven't thought about in years came back. The feeling like a loser. The fact that I'm still working a shitty job. No degree. No friends. And she's years into her career about to get married. Just sucks. I'm usually not a jealous person. I didn't think I still had feelings for her. But how emotional I am about seeing that really took me for a loop. I don't even know how to talk to my girlfriend about it because I shouldn't have because I shouldn't have been looking my ex up on social media to begin with. Whew. Okay, before Ooh. the edit. Do you want to uh, process your thought? Well, you've probably already processed your thought. <laughs> Let me process. Let me process. <laughs> Processing, <laughs> processing. Just like you open your mouth and then just like a conveyor belt, like tongue comes out and it's just like long and then just like words start coming out. 
if you say you've never looked up your ex or anyone that you've had relations with, you're a damn liar. You're, lying, you're a fucking huh? liar, bro. I think we've all done that. And if you haven't done that, kudos to you and your self-control. I don't have that. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's okay to be like curious about like what happened to said person. You know, like I, I am very much guilty of doing that. Especially when she's done listening to a photograph by Nickelback for the yep. thousandth time. Yeah, I play that on it's a really loop nostalgic. and I look through all of my exes Instagram. <laughs> Look at this like tears in your eyes. Yeah, just <laughs> sobbing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I do. But yeah, it's okay to be like, hey, I wonder how they're doing. Like, what are what are they up to? And yeah. not, you know, ninety eight percent of the time, it's gonna hurt because you'll be like, damn, they're doing well. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll feel a certain type of way. That's just life, my brother. You know, I think yeah. that's a, I'm just, a human experience. Yeah, I'm just glad that OP. You know didn't you know bring it up to his current girlfriend um or tried to actually reach out to yes when i saw cyber stalking i was really scared I that he was gonna be like fucked up and like yeah. literally harass her but this is so innocent and this is like something we've all fucking done and it's also you know i think when relationships end you know sometimes it's not always black and white mm -hmm. You know, there can always be many reasons for people leaving, as we've seen throughout, you know, the last few stories where sometimes you fall out of love. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it, you fall so out of love, you cause you to cheat or just like, I'm you know, what, what have love. you. I'm so lost without you. Sorry. No, <laughs> please continue. <laughs> no, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> God, I lost my fucking train of thought. <laughs> I was I'll, on a I'll, roll. I'll take the blame for that. I fucked you up. <laughs> um, I, I can get back. I can get back. Um, processing. 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 <laughs> you know, when relationships end, it's not always black and white. There can be multiple reasons, as we've seen throughout the last few Reddit stories, mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes you fall out of love. Sometimes you things just end horribly. Sometimes things can end, you know, respectfully and amicably or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I... I think it's unfair unless you were an absolute piece of shit and you abused somebody yeah um th that's a completely different story but i don't think that a breakup should be the be all end all of that person's like character and what it defines them as mm -hmm. because everybody you know i i don't i controversial opinion i don't believe that Hot everybody take. has one particular soulmate out out there for them you know I think that there are just people that you meet in your life that are just the right fit for you. And I know that a lot of people might be like, you know, oh, like it's taken me a long time to fucking find that white person. You know, yeah, and no, right, right, like, right. I think. Hey, I get that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm one you know, of those people. <laughs> but I guess what I'm trying to say. Speak your is... truth, King. <laughs> God. Now I feel like now I feel like I'm talking in front of like a million people. Speak your um, truth. <laughs> Spotlight like the on you. <laughs> the microphone, like feed, I tap it, and it's just like a feedback, like. <laughs> um. <laughs> His ex is currently on a you know the path that she was. You know I don't not don't believing in not saying I believe in like destiny and fate and shit. What like that. the what the fuck do but, you believe in, Daryl? You don't believe in soulmates. You don't believe in fate. You don't believe in paths. What the fuck what is you going believe? on? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, no, whatever, whatever, like whatever choices that she has made that has left that have made her get to that point, just the same as the choices that OP made to get to yes. get him to that point. Everyone has life know, path, life, life. Everyone paths. has life paths, and it doesn't necessarily mean that because you are in somebody's current life path means that you're always going to be on that path with them. And I think that needs to be normalized and accepting. And accepted. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, I, it's definitely not worth, like, comparing yourself to your ex's life. Like That's what I was trying to get to, was comparing. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Just 
just having a stroke over there. Holy shit. Me, my, my, my brain is just like... <laughs> over fucking drive, what? dude. It sounds like the fans in a PC. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> but then it like breaks off, just like... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. This story was posted on Am I the Weenie? Posted by user Firm Tip at 9612. Uh, you have a firm firm tip? Y'all, y'all got a firm tip? Yeah. I got a firm tip. Got, you okay. don't, if you don't got a firm tip, you gotta go get that tip sharpened. <laughs> you gotta get <laughs> gotta get that tip checked. <laughs> okay. Am I the weenie tip for check. <laughs> tip check? Tip <laughs> check. Jesus. Am I the weenie for laughing in my cousin's face when she tried to stage an intervention for my quote unquote drug use? Just laughing like Ar Arthur from Joker. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know the laugh. <laughs> okay. I. I don't sound like that, but continue. Yeah, you do. I, 27 male, have a condition which causes me to overproduce earwax. I don't tell people about it because I was bullied for it growing up. Only my wife and parents know. Every other day, I have to put medication in each ear. Let it sit, then flush it out with a rubber-tipped syringe. This prevents ear infections, vertigo, permanent hearing loss, and worsening of my tinnitus. I have dealt with all of these things to some extent, so I stay on top of my eardrop re uh, regimen. If my alarm goes off when I'm with others, I go to the bathroom for 20 minutes and knock it out. Damn. <laughs> if, I don't follow, uh, <laughs> if I don't follow my schedule, knock it out in 20 minutes. That's crazy. If I don't follow my schedule, I forget, so I can't put it off. What does this have to do with anything? What do you mean? I don't know. Oh, no, sh never mind. Okay. Two weeks ago, my mom hosted family dinner. My cousin Kara, uh, 37 female, saw me waltz off, waltz off to the bathroom to do my thing, syringe in hand, and asked what I was doing. I said just a minor medical thing. She kept pushing, but I didn't want to say anything because she gossips. I told her it's personal and scooted past. When I left, she was standing in the hallway. She asked what took so long and why the toilet didn't flush. I said none of her business. She said she didn't mean to offend. Last weekend, my friend called me to invite me out to lunch with some buddies. He said to meet up at his house so we wouldn't have to drive separately. I arrive at his house and find Kara and my friends sitting solemnly on the couch. Kara said they were here to talk about my quote-unquote problem and that they just oh. wanted to help. <laughs> <laughs> I said Get there the clamps, the mini clamps. We gotta look in his ears. Dude. I said there is no problem. Suddenly it clicked in my head what this was about. I couldn't help but laugh a little bit out of shock. She asked what was so funny. And I said, first of all, why didn't you talk to my wife or my parents? She said she didn't want to involve my quote unquote enablers. Uh, which just made me <laughs> laugh harder. She looked annoyed and said she was done trying to help. I said, that's all right by me. She stormed out. I explained to my friends. They knew I have a condition, but never pressed me on it. I guess when Kara approached them, they thought I was lying. Obviously, I'd rather they know than worry about me being an addict when I'm not. I thanked them for their support anyways. Kara had uh, apparently reached all of my friends through social media. We all got a good hearty laugh out of it, which Kara must have heard because she was, of course, eavesdropping. She burst back in and told me to tell them the truth, to which I said I did. My friend kicked her out. We went for lunch and I thought that was that. My mom called oh. me yesterday and told me she had talked to Kara about the whole thing and explained. She said Kara was very upset with me and essentially called me a weenie for not explaining and laughing what? in her face and embarrassing her. I, oh. I said I was embarrassed and that Kara had no right uh, to my info. I think she shouldn't go around snooping and making assumptions. My mom still thinks I should apologize. To add, she didn't see my alarm go off, just ran into me on her way from the kitchen. My alarm isn't for dinner time. It's for 9.15 p.m. I do it at home most of the time. That Ooh. is crazy. <laughs> Just Kara. immediately assumed he's on fucking drugs because he... <laughs> Start going. Kara, Kara, whatever the fuck. Holy shit. What? I, I would understand being maybe like... like sketch out. Just be like, like hey, like... <laughs> hey. Is everything all right? Like... Uh, just like, oh, oh my god, I'm so I'm sorry, I'm so embarrassed. That's about as far as it should go. That, literally, that's it. That's like... <laughs> like, I get that OP didn't want to say his, like, little condition, because, yeah, I get it. I get being, like, embarrassed about something. Like, I sweat a lot. I have hyperhidrosis. Yeah. Plus, I'm on fucking 
uh, Zoloft. So I'm a sweaty bitch. And I don't like telling people that I do that, but they see it, unfortunately. <laughs> Does Zoloft make you sweat? I mean, I was... Yes, I, it, it I makes it for you... the longest time. Yeah, it... Uh... God, what is the fucking word? You're you're more sensitive to the heat. There you go. So like you you start sweating more and, and and all that fun stuff. But I have oh god, I have three things that make me sweat. So I'm just a sweaty bitch. <laughs> so it's really fucking hard. Like my hands right now, wet. <laughs> Mine are pretty dry. Oh, must be fucking nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I I mean whenever I'm doing anything at work, I usually work up a pretty good sweat. Like, I'm a pretty sweaty boy. Okay. I mean, yeah, movement. It's going to make you sweat. But, but I mean, also, <laughs> I, but like, I feel like I sweat a lot more than the normal person. I get that. I get that. I get that. So I kind of feel you on that. Even I'm trying to relate to you, best. Even when I like go outside and sit down, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm dripping. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever, when I come down to visit, I'm just going to, if we're sitting out on the porch, I'm just going to look at you and be like, Damn. Are you okay? <laughs> and I'm just like fucking dripping. Like, yeah, I'm good. Just wiping from there's my this eyes. One bead, there's one bead that's like accumulating at your eyebrow, but like several beads. Just, oh. So it's just one giant drop. Just and a stream. Like drops on your leg and I'm just like looking at it. And then I'm like. But yeah, the consensus was not the weenie, which obviously, because that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I understand. Uh. Uh, looking, I mean, humor me for a second. Let me humor. Yeah, um, but not that type of humor. Um, or maybe this take might be dog shit. But here we go. Um, uh, I can understand from Kara's point of view about the um, being concerned. Yeah. I yeah. I can understand the concern, but still being upset after the misunderstanding. Yeah. And whatnot. Just be like, like oh, I okay, maybe I took it too far. <laughs> like she kind of made it more of a big deal than um you know, she had needed to. Yeah. And also like you don't owe everybody like an explanation for everything in your life. Yeah. And why you do things or what you do. It, it's so. okay to be vague. And if they don't accept that, meh. Yeah. Meh. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Someone in the comments are like, would you tell that to Ted Bundy? I'm like, <laughs> oh, not Ted Bundy. <laughs> Probably not. Probably but, not. But he's dead, so anyway. <laughs> where do we go from there? Where do we go from there? Well, guys. Help me, please. Help me. <laughs> Great help me. video. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I get being under, like, like you said, get be being concerned for a family member because, you know, they're walking away with a syringe and you're like, Meh, what's that about? Yeah. What is that? But if they tell you, hey, it's a medical thing. I don't really want to get into it, but I need to go do this. Then be like, OK. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's it. Like, you don't have to you don't have to pry like that and then get all their yeah, friends so involved and shit. Like, that was just that was just a whole weird situation. Ultimately, it's just not your business. Yeah. It's just not your business. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's go on to the final thing here. Yeah. God. All right. So I did unpopular opinion for the one of the last Reddit roulettes because uh, I really kind of like going on unpopular opinion and just looking at them and be like, ah, oh, that's wrong. No, you're, you're uh, so you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> um, not so much for this one. Okay. This post was posted by New Imagination on unpopular opinion. I don't think it's bad being ugly. I'm an ugly woman. <laughs> yes, you are, Daryl. <laughs> I am an I ugly am, woman. <laughs> and I, I am not many things in this world, but what I am is an ugly woman. <laughs> <laughs> we love honesty. <laughs> I'm very out of the beauty standard for my country, and in front of groups, it has always been the consensus that I'm the least attractive one. I'm out of shape. Don't look after myself too much beyond the basics, and my facial features are kind of weird. When I was 13, it was a big deal, I guess, but now that I'm older, it just kind of isn't. Being ugly doesn't mean that you're unpleasant to be around or that you're an idiot or anything like that. It just means that most people wouldn't want to be with you romantically or sexually. I don't believe a person needs to have an active romantic or sexual life to be happy and have a fulfilling life. So, whatever. I think it makes it easier to make friends, too. I'm not a threat to my female friends, and I'm not an object of desire for my male friends. Sure, some people are weenies, but these aren't people worthy of attention anyway. Overall, I don't think it's bad to be ugly. 
And whenever someone tries to insult another person calling them that, I think it's pretty stupid. I think insults to personality and mental capability are much worse. Okay. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for that's watching. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? But, well, I, I was about to say, um, as a... As a as woman. A, as, a, <laughs> as, a, as a woman. As a professional I, ugly woman. <laughs> yes. As a professional ugly woman, um, I I agree in, in, in a few ways with New Imagination. I don't think I was ever made fun of for being ugly. I think a lot of people were just like, well, if we just make fun of him for being ugly, he can be, it could be kind of like, oh, rude because he's just not white. I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> but um, I can understand the, it's weird how there's some like groups of women that have this, I guess and I'm not saying every woman because it's definitely not every woman, but um, I'm not going to ignore the fact that there's certainly groups of women out there that have like a hierarchy within their friend group based on specifically women and women basing it on like a hierarchy on their beauty mm -hmm. or at least their perception of what beauty is. Yeah, I didn't never really understood that. I mean, I'm sure that there are guys out there that might be the same way, but like most of the guys that I was friends with weren't like that. So I, I can't. I've never been put in that position, but I think that's pretty shitty. Yeah, <laughs> to have some sort of social hierarchy within your friend group. <clears throat> yeah, that's weird. That's very weird. But honestly, you can say any like any kind of friend group that does that is really fucked up because it's not just women do it no i but... was not no uh... <laughs> no uh... <laughs> no i know what you mean yeah. um but yeah i think just anyone that has like that social hierarchy of like oh i'm i'm more attractive than my friend so i'm i'm more important like that's yeah. weird as fuck um i think a lot of social hierarchies are stupid yeah but that's this yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. for uh maybe another video yeah um <laughs> I, it's good to be self-aware. I would say I'm pretty self-aware. Like, this is not even in a fucking, like, self-pity way. Like, guys, d just, shh. I know I'm not hot. I am cute, I would probably say. But I'm the most proud of my personality, to be honest. Because, like, I know I can make someone laugh. And I feel like that's being called funny or just like, hey, I really enjoy being around you. Or, like, you're just so fun to be around. I think that's such a better compliment than being like oh you're so hot yeah you know what i'm saying because I, I guess there's because there's like some sort of like lust behind that yeah kind of statement and it's like you're just kind and of also, seeing me as an object really and also we're all gonna get old and be ugly someday yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's it's not granted i enjoy some... being called attractive who wouldn't like <laughs> but i'm not gonna pass that up uh, yeah i'm not gonna be like actually don't tell me that <laughs> like <laughs> But Here I, come the self-affirming comments. <laughs> but I, I just think, it, yeah, like insults to personality or like mental capability, like that, that stings a little bit. Yeah, for sure. But like physical stuff, be like, I can change it. <laughs> it's like, you know, if someone were to be on the internet and like comment on our videos or like on a social media post of mine, just be like, you know what? You're one ugly motherfucker. And I think that you should uh, go jump off of a cliff. Yep. And I would be I would look at that comment and be like, you know what? Fair. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even say fair. I would just be like, Valid. I would be like, <laughs> it's like, I don't really care. Like I have people in my life that would say different. Mm -hmm. So it's like exactly. people that I actually care about. If someone were, if yep. someone were to insult my intelligence, which is basically 5%, at all times of the year. I might feel a certain way about that. Yeah, but, you know. I feel that. Like, don't call me stupid. Yeah. Only I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, all right, everyone, guys. I hope you... God. <sighs>